Thank you for listening to Humana Story Live Presents. As you might know, we are funded completely by Humanistorians like yourself. And without the continuous effort and contributions you have made both in the past and present, Humana Story would not be possible. We thank you again for doing your part in keeping this dream a reality. Together, we are the story of humanity, one person at a time. Let's let the show begin. Resource consumption. Do you believe the majority of power will come from solar and wind within the next decade? Let's talk about that. Yeah, let's talk about that. Welcome to Humana Story. Humana Story was built out of the need for human companionship, a togetherness that only comes from people helping others. We wanted to be able to tell our stories and share our expressions with everyone who needs them. By us telling our stories, we're able to share that moment that forever changed who we are. But the idea is not just to tell our story, but to share the journey in how we overcame that moment in our lives, allowing others to read and see the story and connect to the one sharing. Most people want to tell the horrid things, but fail to share the accomplishments. At Humana Story, we are not those people. We are strong. The winners. We are the achievers. We believe that sharing our experiences will help someone out there in the same situation and allow them to connect with others that have already conquered their struggle. We give the resource within our stories to help those who otherwise would fall. The help to stand up and face what is in front of them without fear or doubt. We believe everyone has the ability to succeed in life. If you are alive on this little rock hurtling through the endless void we call the universe, you are a Humana story. How much of one is up to you? Hello, Humana Storians, and welcome to another exciting episode of Humana Story Live's Coffee with Humana Story, episode number 56. I'm Brian, your host, and I am joined by Sunshine and Chuckles. This is the lighthearted show where... We actually force the hosts to read your comments from our previous Humana Story activities and then discuss them while you're tied into a chair and beaten into submission with a club. If they're good, I will read them on the air. And if they are bad, Sunshine and Chuckles will be more ex- will be happier to read them on the air. Chuckles. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, all right. So, Chuckles is new. Um, she will be uh, taking over... Mark Emke's spot. And as a lot of people may know already, uh, Mark Emke, my co-host, he passed away on the 4th of October, 2016. Um, so we got to give her a, a little round of applause because, you know, while she's new, she's a little bit nervous. But... uh we're going to give her the best possible shot she can do, and uh, I think she'll do well. Yes, I will. <laughs> you know, you're just just like Mark was uh, when he was doing the show. He uh, would give me those uh, two lines, you know, yes and no. And that's about <laughs> as far as it would ever go. I, um, can't, I can't replace Mark, but I'm going to give it my best shot. All right, so... Coffee with Humana Story is the unscripted show whose theme is created by members, for members, and involves Humana Story community members from around the world. We also have the unfortunate shoals, Tinkerbell. Go ahead and say hi, Tinkerbell. That would be you. Is that, is that me? Yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way, you have an echo. I have an echo. Uh, you have an echo. No. You smell like ointment and pee. <laughs> no. No, no it's, I don't. And, and so, me. yeah. Hi, everyone. Yeah, you, you <laughs> weird echo. No, I mean, I, well, the echo is gone now. Yeah, that's what I, yeah, it's, it's telling you. It's not me. It's you. It's you and your computer setup, Tinkerbell. It is, it, oh, I, it I still is, have to get a hold of. not. Yeah. This may, is, may the fleas of a thousand camels infest your armpits. It is not. <laughs> he's just mad because he's the computer programmer. So if you can't find the show, you're probably using, is that a Dutch oven? No, that's <laughs> a toaster oven in the bathroom somewhere off grid. And more importantly, the more you weigh, the harder you are to kidnap, so eat more pudding. We'll be answering questions from our Twitter account at Humana Story. That's, how do you, how do you say the at symbol? 
<laughs> Humanasauri. H U M A N A S T O R Y. And uh, if you still love snail mail, you can mail us information, goodies, whatever you want to mail me. You can mail it at P.O. Box 712151, Santee, California, 92072, 2151. You can submit your stories or missing person logs to us by going to our site at humanastory.com. Clicking the submit button will get you there. Submissions can also be mailed in using the same snail mailbox mentioned above. Uh, I do have one life in review featuring Mr. Mark Emke. For those of you that were fans of Mr. Mark Emke, it was from January 9th, 2016. I, I just put it up because of the situation we had. Uh, so you guys are more than welcome to uh, go check that out. If you feel like voicing your opinion, you can do so with a dedicated theme. Then open with your statement. You want to head to humanastory.com for details. That's H-U-M-A-N-A-S-T-O-R-Y.com. Mr. Sergeant. Yeah. How are you today? No complaints. No complaints. Currently, currently up here in Victoria, Canada, uh, enjoying the, um, the scenery. All right, so I do have today's question. Actually, the theme of today is resource consumption. The question of the day is, do you believe that the majority of power will come from solar and wind within the next decade? Is that a question for me? Well, it's for everyone. uh... No, not a chance. Uh, It it has to be something other than solar or wind because um, solar is way too expensive for what you get out of it. And wind, again, resource intensive. And where are you going to, you know, you're just going to set up a whole bunch of plants in Wyoming and parts of Oregon and wherever the wind blows. Never, yeah. never going to happen. The uh, we're we're too. Our civilization is hinged on petroleum products. The the petroleum industry we is so embedded in everything that we do. Unless we convert to something like the unified field engine, which at this point doesn't exist, uh, we you know it's oil or nothing. It's my opinion. And you're sticking to it. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I firmly believe. You know, they'll say. You know what. What is? What do you think is the most? That this, everyone, every once in a while, you'll get this question: What was the most important invention in in modern times? They'll say, "Oh, the computer," or uh, you know, the internet, or, or. But for me, it's always been the 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 internal combustion engine, because it's it's an extension of labor. Once we created machines that could do things that people could not, the, and, and would do it very very cheaply. By comparison, it, it, it transformed everything and everyone, and so we can't go back from that. Not not easily. And what do you think, Chuckles? I agree with them. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah, no problem. <laughs> That's it? <laughs> That's it. What you got? <laughs> All right, Sunshine, what do you think? Yeah, I tend to agree. I actually brought this up because there was a state, I believe it was Oregon, that wanted to go off of wind power solely, like wind and solar power. So they were trying to transform the whole state to not have to do any kind of oil or anything like that. So it was, it was a very interesting read. I'll, 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 I'll throw in one more little angle, you know, because I don't want to be necessarily doom and gloom on this. You um, are always you- doom and gloom every time I talk to you. <laughs> Well, no, none of us are going to make it, man. It's all, it's, <laughs> it's not good. It's Nothing going down, good. man. No, no, no. <laughs> what I was going to say was, if you wanted to power a city on solar or wind, yeah, fine. You, you could do that. But who is going to bring the food to, to the city? You know, the trucks have to run on fuel, diesel fuel. The ships have to run on fuel. The, the planes have to run. There are no solar power. I mean, yes, there are a few solar powered f- planes. But none that ca- carry you know massive amounts of cargo, so the infrastructure is set up for oil. It, yeah, fine. You want to do isolated things. It, it, yeah, I know there's some great little future movies where you could do some wind. And I, I I was from Colorado where there's a bunch of wind turbines, and that does you know kick in, and some people do get money back on their solar panels. Yeah, well. But you know for the for the rest of it, you know, it's just not. I just don't see it happening. Sorry. Is there anything positive in your life? 
Dude, no, he I, asked I, me I am just a asking okay, every time one, I ask I'm you a, a conspiracy question. Conspiracy guy. So, <laughs> and 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 plus, I was late to the conspiracy game. Remember, I didn't even believe people. You know, anybody in in authority lied until I was in college. So, you know, this is this. It's not. It's not a bad thought, but but solar and wind. That's not the answer. I'm not saying you can't transform into something else, but it's gonna have to be a unified field engine. That's that's what it's going to have to be, and if those people don't know what that is. That's that's the mythical engine that that can power UFOs, you know the it, the balance between gravitational waves and electromagnetic waves. So if you can get that, yeah, great. You can replace cars and ships and trucks and trains and all that stuff with what just one vehicle. Uh, but if, if we have discovered it, it's not in civilian use yet. Well, so. it, in in my research, in, in the mounds and mounds of research Unsolved Mysteries episode, I don't remember which one, um, <laughs> they, they, they were talking about uh, uh, anti-gravity and that our government had already had it and has had That's it true. since, what, the 50s? But the but the problem the problem there is, I'll use an X Files episode. If I'm not that so, far, it, I just started the thing. You really you're going to ruin the whole freaking thing for me? We're no, on no, no, episode no, no, three, no. man. If civilian, if you, Brian, created tomorrow a unified field engine, I would be that dead. Could re, that could replace the internal combustion engine? How much would the would the oil industry pay you? to not release it well no actually i already have an answer to that because in the 70s a guy made a water-powered engine and uh oh i i, I know that was an yeah. x-files episode no yeah. no 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 it was real i don't remember his no, no, name no, I, I know i believe it was real but i'm just saying it was also an x-files episode yeah and well he he ended up like i guess uh ford came to him and tried to buy the patent from him and then an admiral or general or something like that walked up to him you know came to his house and then the next day he was missing yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, no, no. Let, let's let's go even to something that's a little more public. Anyone who wants to have some fun with this? Look up the documentary called "Who Killed the Electric Car," yeah. where Ford released its EV1 electric car back in the '90s. And what was interesting was they put it out there, just kind of you know see if they could do it, and it started catching on, and especially in California. But the thing was, they didn't let anybody buy the car; you could only lease it. And when people tried to renew their lease, they said, no, no, we're taking the cars back. Basically, they got pressure from the uh, the oil industry to say, no, no, it's not the right time to release electric cars yet. And then Jap- Japan came along and you know got the jump and got the Prius and the Leaf. Um, throw one more out at you. The, uh, the, automo- the, the automobile industry, when they were first taking off, I think in the 50s, when they were really you know ramping up. The, the guy's they- name. The guy's name was Stanley Meyer. Okay, there you go. They bought all the street car. Like I remember, one in California at the very least, they bought up all the street car systems and then ripped out the tracks and 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 trashed the uh, all the trolleys because they don't. They you know the public transportation is the enemy of automobiles. So it it just mm-hmm. goes to show that we protect our own interests sometimes not at the benefit of society. Yeah, the guy the guy's name, the guy that I was referring to that made the water powered car, Stanley Myers. I don't he did it in the late seventies. That's it's S T A N L E Y and his last name is Meyer M E Y E R. Um yeah. but yeah, yeah it, it that's the thing. It was publicized all over and then then it just stopped. Yeah. You know but he he literally you could take any water water from anything, pour it in the gas tank and yeah. go. I mean, if so. let's if Tesla was alive today, he would be working for the government, plain and simple, uh, or, or he would have been taken care of because his stuff, you know, the stuff he was making was was revolutionary. It, it tapped into free energy, for what I could tell. So, anyway, was that the wireless energy that they were talking about? Why do you gotta ruin my show? Dude, I'm not ruining your show. You asked. Yeah, you honest, you, I, I'm sorry. Do you want me to go the other? You want me? To go yeah, to I wanted you to say really? what I wanted you. To, I'm your handler. <laughs> oh jeez. Say, you, you oh know no, this. man. Solar and wind. That's the future. I know. Oh, absolutely. Supposed and to. and and making your own shoes out of hemp and uh, a lot of a lot of chanting and inner realization and no, harmonic frequency. And, yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, man. It's, like Canada it's, it's, it's the other. It's the other way around. People protect capitalism. Protects its interests, plain and simple. And I'm not. And I'm not being 
Debbie Downer here, but it does. Um, look at the movie. Um, Do you like how uh, he I'll... says what he's not, and then he turns around and does it? <laughs> no, 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 no. Look at look look at the movie uh, Blood Diamond. I'll give you not even an energy one. Blood Diamond with uh, Leonardo Leonardo DiCaprio, and that was the. Let's, let's let's be honest here. When you monopolize a market like the diamond industry, for example, if somebody came up, almost out of time. You only have fifty seconds. Wrap it up fast. Oh, okay. That the diamond industry would come to that person and say, "Look, we want that diamond. We want the rights to the quarry, and we want we want you to sign a non disclosure agreement saying you're never ever going to tell anybody this ever. And if you do so, we will take steps." Same, same thing with the oil industry. Same thing with anything. If you monopolize the market, you control your competition. And they did that and with diamonds, didn't they? What they did that with diamonds. Monopolize the whole yeah, market. Yeah, they did. And... They did. So we don't even know if there is. No, yeah, absolutely the diamond market is monopolized. I'm just saying if somebody discovered a, a better gem even tomorrow, the diamond industry would step in. Humana's story is the story of humanity, one person at a time. We believe each person has a story to tell, and each story shapes that person into who they are today. Collectively, and more importantly, each and every person's story shapes this little blue rock we call home. We are all together whether we like it or not. We also believe that your unique story might just help someone else traveling down your pathway in life. You might be their guide through this rough time. We are always looking for more exciting stories to share with the world. If you've got one, come share it with us today. All right, so you are listening to episode number 56, Coffee with Humana Story. Uh, I did things a bit out of order for everyone. Um... Because we have a lot of comments to get through. We were going to read a few comments from the last few uh, videos and episodes and all that. Because of what happened to Mark, and a lot of people are wondering what happened. Uh, my co-host passed away. And I'm not talking about Mark Sargent. I'm talking about Mark Emke. Um, so a lot of you guys wrote in, uh, we got all kinds of emails. We got all kinds of, uh, positive feedbacks. And, uh, well, first off, I want to thank every one of you. I am going to make, uh, chuckles and sunshine here. They're going to read the comments. Um, and then we're going to pick a fantastic Friday winner. And that winner will need to contact us. Once they get a chance. Yep, that's right. So, we have lots of comments here. They are from the service announcements number two and number three from YouTube. From Lori Gale, I am truly sorry for your loss and I will be sure to tune into your show. To me, losing a loved one is the hardest thing you can experience. You long for their physical company, no matter how strong your beliefs in the afterlife. You still miss the person. To me, this is one of life's biggest challenges. It makes me feel good to know you enjoyed my video. It helped me just to put up, to put it on the video. Like a tribute to my friend and sharing my pain with the good people here on YouTube is very cathartic. Much love and peace to you, Lori. From Tinfoil Hatter. Hey, that's cool. I knew Mark was a good guy. From Jeff Stewart. He lost all. The memory of, of Mark will endure through all of us. All right, before you go any further, so Lori Gale actually had a YouTube video out. Uh, the video that she had was called Tuesday Thinking, Where Are My Dead Loved Ones? And, you know, I just happened to run across that video a few days after Mark had passed, and, uh, it, you know, it struck a little chord, brought a tear to my eye, and... Uh, it was a very beautiful, beautiful message. Uh, I urge anyone who is out there to go check it out and uh, leave positive feedback. A lot of the problems with YouTube is many, many people have a lot of negative things to say, but not enough positivity. So, continue on. All right, from They Lie, Ohio. Wow, thanks, buddy. It's all, it's all you that deserve the thanks. Thanks for your patience with me and my job. And at this point... What video is that to? This is from the service announcement number three. Thanks for your patience with me and my job. And at this point, who gives a shit what the shape of the earth is? We as a human population better get it together. 
We are many. If we stand together, we can stop these useless wars and war that is getting ready to happen. Stand up and tell them you don't not do not need consent. You do not want war. Peace, Brian and Christina. From Ace McLeod. Hi, sorry about the circumstance. From Mark Sargent. Mark M. Key's personality and dialogue was some of the best comic relief I've ever heard in a podcast. His innocence, childlike aggression, and skewered banter made doing shows with him special. Or there were moments that pained me as he struggled with difficult dialogue tailored for him. There were others when his off-kilter remarks threw my train of thought so far off the rails I wondered if I would ever get back. Like the original Brat character from the gone but not forgotten television show Space Ghost Coast to Coast, Mark will also not be forgotten. He enjoyed life, fought hard, and most importantly, kept his wonderful sense of humor until he moved on to one of the other worlds that lie outside of this place. I, for one, will miss what he brought to a conversation. Okay, this one is from Christopher Millington from YouTube. I wish he didn't pass. If I, if only I could trade places with him, because the world is a, and was, a much better, funnier place with him around, just being himself. Even though I never knew him, I feel like I did anyway. I love his personality and how very kind he was towards anyone. Love you, Mark. Rest in peace. This is Orphan Red. My thoughts are with you. And this is from Polly G17. Hey, man, sorry for your loss, bro. I mean this sincerely. I'm from the UK. I'm into flat earth and other things. If only recently... In the last few weeks, started listening to Jeff Stewart and Chris Wark. I recall seeing you pop up in the, in some of their hangouts. Not sure if it was a chat. Anyway, just a quick message to say I'm thinking of you. And from James I. M., Take care, Mark. I enjoy listening to you and your life stories. Thank you, Brian. The humor, honestly, and down to earth. Realism is a breath of fresh air. Elliot Falby. Elliot Fobel. Fobel. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody could ever say his name right. Elliot Fobel. Uh, I know you're working, buddy, and I know you work hard, so, uh, you know. Uh, we'll try to catch up to you guys on the weekend here. And uh, Chris uh, Rock was the one that you were looking for. He spelled it W-R-O-C-K. He's actually a pretty cool guy. In fact, he, uh, I believe he's listening to the show tonight. Go ahead and uh, continue reading those comments. Again, these comments are all from uh, uh, when uh, Mark Emke passed. I had been putting up a bunch of things, and uh, I feel that uh, he deserves good praise. I mean, the man was an, was an awesome man, so uh, go ahead and continue reading. Mark, you sweet, sweet man. Thank you for your kind words to me and for all the laughs you gave us all. Uh, gave us among, among the way, along the way. My prayer is that you will be safe in the arms of the Lord Jesus. There is no better place to be. You will never be forgotten, Mark. You have made a big impact in all of your listeners' lives. God bless you, buddy. I won't say goodbye, but I that I will see you soon. Your friend always, Elliot. James Billings, we miss you. Wish you the best on your new journey. This one's from Good Times for All. Good Times for All. Actually, I believe it's Good Tims for All. If you guys actually look at his name. (laughs) Everybody's mispronounced it the entire time. Good Tims, I got your back, man. (laughs) (laughs) Dear Mark, you are about to take the first step on the amazing journey. Do not fear. You will be met with smiling faces and warm embraces everywhere from now on. You will be... You will be shown the answers to all the questions, and for this, I envy you. Thank you for all 
the laughs. You are a shining light in a dull world and hold a special place in many hearts. Good luck on your journey, sir. Take care and Godspeed, Zachary. Ah, uh, Zachary. Zachary's a good man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have a few more here. From Jack Frost. Mark, thank you for bringing joy and laughter. We enjoyed your lighthearted fun during these wonderful programs. Prayers and thoughts go with you in the next stage of your journey. We'll see you up there in a bit. Best wishes. And thanks to Brian and Christina for all that you do. Love and best wishes to you all. Jack Frost. From Jeff Frazier. Mark, although I've never met you, you are a kindred spirit. My family's thoughts and prayers will be with you and your family. From Earth's Sweetheart. Mark, we are sending prayers. I wish you a peaceful journey. From Vicki Fobel. Mark, we never got the chance to meet you in person, but we loved you the minute we met you. Thank you for being a part of our lives and letting us be a part of yours. You are a kind, good man. God loves you, and so do we. Bless you, sweet man. Vicki and Elliot Fogel. That wraps up our comments. Ah, the comments. Let me give you guys an applause. (laughs) Thank you. you. And a crowd search. (laughs) <laughs> good job good job alright so Mr. Sergeant any last words you'd like to say for uh, Mr. M. Key as in a goodbye uh no no I, I think my, my comments were pretty much everything I wanted to say I don't think I could I could do any better than that at the moment but uh, he, he will be missed oh uh, yeah yep yep we're definitely going to rest in peace after this we're going to try to move forward The last things he said to me, um, it'll take a moment for me to actually set it all up, but I, uh, I, I'm going to share you guys something that he, he did for me. So in the meantime, say stuff. (laughs) Yeah. Mark was a really amazing guy. He was always full of laughs. You know, there was never a dull moment when he was around. And, um, one thing that I will miss, he always came up to me from, and uh, gave me Hugs around my stomach and squished me really hard. I always miss that. <laughs> you had competition, Mr. Sergeant. <laughs> you did. He was always saying if I if he was thirty years younger that he uh he would be looking out for me. <laughs> I I can't comment on that because we're on air. <laughs> it's simple. All right, so listen, this is the last thing he said to me, and uh, I figured it'd be the last thing we say to you guys. I love you, Brian. Thanks for taking care of me. You're doing a great job. I love you very much. So, Chris Rock wrote me, and uh, he says, Roses are red, violets are blue. Mr. Mark Emke, we will miss you. Comic relief with childhood love. Rest in peace with God above. Oh, that's cool. All right, so with all that said, uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap everything up, guys. Uh, This was not really, wasn't going to be a planned show. Um, It was more of of a goodbye show for Mr. Emke. Uh, he wanted us to carry on like normal, and carry on we did. And then Mark Sargent continued to carry on, and carry on, and carry on. <laughs> but, it's all in good fun. And uh, we are going to miss Mr. M. Key, but we will love him, and he will always be in our hearts. So before I go, I want to pick a fantastic Friday winner. And out of the comments that you guys have read, who? Is the Fantastic Friday winner? Hmm. Tough, tough decision. The winner is bum, 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 Lori Gale. All right, so Lori Gale, when you get this message, you need to contact me. Going to humanastory.com front slash contact dot html. And uh, with all that, we say peace. Hi, this is Mark Emke. Please leave a message, and I'll call you back as soon as I get it. Thank you. Have a great day. Humana Story thanks you for listening and your activity with our community. 
We hope to grow a little each day with the lives of ordinary people doing extraordinary things in life-changing events. 